Hello, trading is closed on the 30th of January 2015. I'm Jeffrey Tennant. As usual, let's start with my last call, which was made after this close on Thursday. The market staged a good rally, futures were up, and I said all we had to do was avoid a gap down to see further gains. And I said if there was a gap down, there was no call. Well, there was a gap down, so there was no call. Let's see if MeJT had any better luck. MeJT is basically an intraday trading system. Early in the day, it said ultimately lower prices would print, which they did. There was a strong rally to a new high of the day in the afternoon, but MeJT said early on it was a false move and the prices would return to this point after this time, which they did. So that worked. Being an intraday trading system, MeJT is not making a call for Monday and that forces us to use other forms of technical analysis. Well, the closest unfilled, or I should say failed, targets are 1950.32 on the downside and 2030.52 on the upside. They should print at some time. The system just doesn't say when. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this 2030.52 failed target on the upside because it happened within a consolidation. And as I've shown, those targets tend to fill reasonably quickly. I wonder if we have some more evidence and hint. This is a 65 minute chart. If you think the market's going to collapse, what's wrong with this chart? First of all, based on DeMarc, Fibonacci, and cycle analysis, there is strong support at this low. That doesn't mean this, that doesn't mean it's not going to hold, but it could. One problem is there is divergence with the industrial average. If you look at the chart of the industrial average, it broke down to a new low, whereas the S&P and the NASDAQ did not. That could change, but that's the way it is now. In spite of a large drop, we didn't even get a new low in the percentage of stocks with negative chart formations. We also, if this is the top, as I was thinking it probably is, we should have a three-wave consolidation father, uh, and that would be followed by an impulsive move lower. Well this move is not impulsive at all. There are overlaps all over the place. Don't do that to me. There are overlaps all over the place. Now it's possible to fiddle around with this with a bunch of ones and twos and ones and twos but usually when you count that way early on you get your head handed to you. Also, we have a wall into the close. I'm always suspicious of it. It tends to indicate selling at any price. And it did start early enough, so it could represent big money. But whenever I see selling at any price beginning late on a Friday, I wonder who's doing the selling. If you look, there was a big increase in volume, but recent lows held. And the recent lows held at a very important price. It's a Fibonacci target of this consolidation. This is 38.2% and there's the target. And it's also a Fibonacci target of the prior consolidation. This is 23.6%. So the low came at a reasonable price. There is support there based on a variety of techniques. And with heavy volume, it, with no corrections and unabated selling, those lows held. Well, let's make a prediction for Monday. 
if we're going to go down, I think Monday's open is going to be critical. If we're going to go down and stay down, I think we're going to have to make a gap under recent lows and hold it. I think if by some chance we were to have a gap up Monday instead, it could lead to a pretty strong up move, even though ultimately it would not hold. And if we take out recent lows without having a gap under them, I don't think the move is going to stick. I think it will retrace at some point. It isn't based on the MEJT system, but that's my call for Monday.